presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Computers, they're in our homes, our work, our schools, they're in our phones, our appliances, our toys, almost everywhere. But how do computers work? Find out, Science Trek is next. Hi, I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek, and welcome to the offices of HP here in Boise. Today, scientists are standing by to answer your questions about computers, and later on in the show, we'll go to a coding class for kids at the Discovery Center. But first, let's learn a little bit more about computers. What are you doing? Pretending to be a computer. A computer? Yes, a computer is basically a machine that processes information. Write down a math problem on this piece of paper. Okay, here. Here you go. That's being a computer? Yes, it is. Sort of. Broadly, a computer is a machine that can carry out a set of instructions to complete a calculation or a task. The word computer was first used in the 1600s to describe the people who did math problems to calculate things like the position of the stars. But people got bored and made mistakes, so inventors tried to find a machine that could solve math problems more reliably. A mechanical calculator was invented in 1645 but it could only do very simple math by moving dials. The first electronic computers came about because of two scientific breakthroughs. What were they? The binary system and vacuum tubes. What? Well, first the binary system. When we count to 10, we use the digits zero to nine. The binary system uses just zero and one. So zero would be written as zero, and one would be written as one, but two would be written as one zero, and so on. Using the binary system, you can write any number with just two digits. Now vacuum tubes are just like a switch that let you turn electricity on or off. Scientists tied a series of vacuum tubes together to make a circuit that represented the digits. One represented by the switch on, and zero represented by the switch off. The first computers used rooms of vacuum tubes tied together with miles of wire. The Mark I was among the first digital computers. It weighed five tons and used cards punched with little holes to program the machine's operation. Transistors, or semiconductors, eventually replaced vacuum tubes. They're much smaller and use less energy than vacuum tubes, so computers could get smaller and faster. But how do computers work? Well, let's look at the parts of a computer. We just take in information, usually by a mouse, a keyboard, or even your voice. Computers take that information, store it on something like a hard drive or a flash memory card. They then process information in a central processing unit, or a CPU, and then gives you your answers back on a screen, through speakers, or on paper. The parts of the computer that you can touch, like the keyboard, the mouse, and the hard drive, are known as the hardware. Software are the programs or the instructions your computers are given to perform tasks. Computers have an operating system, a special program that controls the basic functions of how stuff gets input, stored, processed, and output. Other applications, or apps, build on the operating system's foundation to do specific things, like word processing or playing games. Students like these are learning to code programs or write applications that run applications on computers. And computers can be found almost everywhere. They're in your phones, your refrigerator, your car. Computers use networks to share information. And we all use the World Wide Web or the internet to find out things, to create things, and to connect with each other all across the world. And joining me now to answer your questions about computers, are Tim Anderson, Chair of the Department of Computer Sciences at Boise State University, and Flossie Urban, a Firmware Program Manager here at HP. Thank you both for joining us. We're happy to be here. Yeah, thank you. 
Okay, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is Annabelle, and my question is, how do computers work? So computers work, they have a central processing unit that basically takes all the information and processes it. There's memory that's attached to that, that they get memory from and instructions on what to do with that memory. Um, they also have a hard drive that stores even more information. And if you're using a computer and you want to interact with it, you have a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor that you can see stuff with. Hi, my name is Colton and my question is, what is a code? Code is the way that engineers tell the computer what to do. It, it's instructions and they have different languages in which you can use that. But basically it's how the computer programmer tells the computer exactly what order and what to do. Hello, my name is Perkett and do computers have gears? I don't believe computers have gears as much anymore. Some may, like a robot type of computer. They used to have them, but as, com as computers have migrated and become more advanced, those gears have gone away. So yeah, I was thinking about this question too. And um, there are parts on a computer that has gears. So there's, uh, there's uh, your DVD drive that can have gears in it. And uh, if you have an old one that's broken, I'd suggest that you get your mom to help you take it apart and take a look at the gears that are inside of it. My name is Lenora. I am from Mrs. Spearman's second grade class. I, I am from Moscow, Idaho. I would like to know, how are computers made? So computers are made by each, as each individual piece of the computer circuits the computer fans, the cables, the different chips, the outside of the exterior of the computer that it's housed in, all of those pieces are built separately and they are put together on a manufacturing line just like a car is built. Hi, my name is Jackson and my question is how does a computer's memory work? All of the memory on a computer, all of the main memory works by storing charge. So you have different areas of the memory where you can store either the presence of charge, so electrical charge, or the absence of it. And if it's, if it's there, then you consider that to have a value of one stored to that location. And if the charge isn't there, then it's a value of zero. And there's just lots and lots of those locations on a memory chip, billions of them. Hi, my name is Kaden. How does Google work? Google is a, is a search engine program and basically it's just like when you're looking for something it goes through all of the different internet sites and the websites looking for specific keywords that you're interested in so just like you're looking for a restaurant like pizza you would know that you would be looking for that specific word on a sign Google works much the same way as it goes through all the different internet sites crawling through them and looking for those specific keywords and then brings them up in a list for you to look at Hi, my name is Silas. What is a computer virus? So a computer virus is a, a small computer program that um, tries to take over your machine and then monitor what you're doing, and you don't want it to do that. Um, it does that by usually inserting itself into another computer program on your machine, uh, and it tries to find one that has low-level access, or so really re uh, unrestricted access to all the parts of your computer. Um, and it inserts itself in there and takes control. And you want to avoid those if possible. And one of the first things you want to do is make sure that you have the latest antivirus software installed on your computer. But you also want to avoid going to websites that aren't very good websites and just downloading applications and installing them without understanding where you're getting them from on your machine. Hi, my name is Drake. And my question is, um, what's the most powerful computer? So currently the most powerful supercomputer is located in China and it's uh, called the Sunway Taihu Light computer. It can perform 93 quadrillion multiplies per second, which is you take two numbers, you multiply them together, it can do that 93, million, or 93 quadrillion times in a second. Rear Admiral Grace Hopper was the first female admiral of the U.S. Navy. 
She not only created the programming language COBOL, but she also came up with the term debugging after removing a moth from a computer. Yuck! Get out of there! Hi, my name is Josie, and my question is, how do messages travel through computers? Messages travel through the computers by through the network. A network is very similar to your highways, and you have an address, like your email address, or through a text network, you've got a text phone address. And so that, t that packet or information goes through that network to the correct address. It goes through stations along the way that direct to where it needs to go. Hi, my name is Ava. My question is, is it difficult to make a computer circuit? Yes, it is difficult to make a computer circuit. To make one, uh, companies have to put in place billions of dollars worth of infrastructure. Once they do that, though, it becomes easy. If you have the infrastructure in place, you can make computer circuits for very little money. Hi, my name is Hannah, and my question is, should I turn my computer off at night? There's a lot of thoughts around whether or not you should turn your computer off at night. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, the thought was, yes, you should, because as you booted the device and shut it down and restarted it, it tend to wear out your parts more often. Now there's discussions about whether or not you should keep them on, and it really depends on whether or not you're using your computer as like a server or other people need to access them at night. Um, you don't necessarily need to turn it off as they also don't have the wear and tear that they used to have. The new modern changes have, have eliminated most of that, that concern. But you are still using electricity, so if you're worried about your electricity, you should probably turn it off. I think you should turn off your computer at night. Saves electricity. Leaving them on consumes lots of electricity in the United States. My name is Andy, and how does a computer know what you're typing? So most people interact with a computer through a keyboard, and that is how you type and tell the computer what you're typing. Each of the keys maps to a circuit, and that circuit goes into the computer and is, tells the computer exactly which letter you're typing or which keystroke you're typing. The computer knows how to take that and put it into their processor to display what you're typing. Hi, my name is Quinn, and, and my question is, why do computers get hot? Uh, computers get hot for the same reason that uh, a burner on an oven gets hot. When you turn on electricity and it flows through a wire, um, it tends to create resistance in the wire that heats up the wire. So there's lots of wires in your computer, lots of electrical circuits, and as electricity flows through those, it heats them up. Faith asks, how do software engineers program computer software? So com software engineers program computer software in multitudes of ways. There's different, different programming languages which you can use, them, use. Programming languages started in the 50s and they've come all the way to today. So there's dozens of them out there. And it's just kind of like talking in a different language. You just need to learn what that language is. And so once you understand what that language is, you can type to the computer and and, and build your code, and then that code gets translated by that computer program to the instructions to tell the computer what to do. So why did you want to study computers? So I was rather late to the computer knowledge and being interested in computers. I was actually in college, and I, was, I really enjoyed mathematics, but I didn't really want to teach mathematics. And so I tried to figure out what, how I could apply my mathematics towards something a little bit different. And I took a beginning computer programming class to satisfy math credit. And I really, really enjoyed it. And that's how I got into computers. When I was a kid, computers were just, and computer games were just starting to kind of become popular. And so there was a lot of interest amongst kids my, my age in getting a computer game and playing it. And, and, and then I started to think, well, I'd like to get a computer. And there was actually some computers you could buy with computer games on them that were better than any video game system you could buy. So that was my first motivation. Um, and, and, and actually, I, I used cherry picking money to buy my first computer, about $1,600 worth of cherry picking money, which is a lot of cherries. Bought my first computer, and I was in high school. And I, I had the computer, and our high school had a computer science class that was being offered. There were just a few students in it, but I thought, I've got a computer. I'd like to 
the computer science class. I did that and I got pretty excited by it and it went from there. So you're gonna fold a paper airplane and you're gonna remember all the steps and then you're gonna write that code down and trade with a partner and see if they can fold your paper airplane. Matthew Hibbert is teaching a class on computer coding at the Discovery Center of Idaho in Boise. It's important to learn to code because most jobs in the future are going to have a very heavy technology aspect behind them and to just understand what is going on with the code and being able to make improvements or adjustments it will be extremely helpful for future jobs. So that's, that's step one of my code. We have that, right? Mm -hmm. Step two of my code, I'm going to fold this down. I definitely know that one. Yeah. Kids of any age can learn. Coding isn't, you know, just sitting in front of a keyboard and staring at a screen and typing. Coding, you can do uh, exercises of real life coding. Make sure you write your code down. You learn to code simply by trial and error. You have a problem you want to solve and you take steps to solve that problem and when you execute your code, if the problem's solved, your code is good. If not, you have to go back and adjust your code and until it is solving the problem that you want it to. Here at the class, we do all sorts of uh, coding of all levels. And uh, on the computers, we're learning how to code with uh, yeah, Lightbot and uh, Hour of Code online. We're going to use Khan Academy later to learn how to actually type code. Hibbert explains how Lightbot teaches coding. Essentially, we have them write a code that gets the robot on the screen to walk and light up all the blue squares. And they do this by using just these modular commands. Uh, essentially, we want him to walk forward one, two, three squares and then light up. So we want him to walk forward one, two, three squares and light up. And then we want him to turn right. And that will be our program one. So this is, should be all we need and we should run it three times and he should be able to light up all the lights. And it just teaches them a really brief introduction into thinking and code. So it's helping them think uh, more abstractly about coding and what they need to do to accomplish uh, the goal. It's fun because it's really just problem solving. It's problem solving in, a, in an entertaining and new way. A lot of people don't solve problems with codes and so to be able to do that at such a young age, it's really rewarding. Hi, my name is Sophie. My question is, how do the answers we find on the internet, how do we know they are right? Well, you don't. And so some of those information, you need to make sure that you're double checking and going to really good sites. Anybody can put information out on the web. You or I, or somebody that doesn't really know the answer can put that information out there. So again, you just need to go to websites that you trust. Websites like Idaho Public Television is a really good website to go to, to trust and make sure that you have that information. Hi, my name is Corbin and I go to Lewis and Clark Elementary. And my question is, how big is the largest computer monitor in the world? That is a good question and I'm not sure, but I've seen computer monitors that are at least 100 inches big. Um, if you count projectors, uh, when you go to the theater, you can see screens that are tens of feet across and you could technically connect a computer to one of those projectors in a theater and run it if you wanted to. Hi, my, my name is Branson. Why are kids addicted to technology, games, and computers? Well, games and technology is fun. It's fun to play with them. Computer programmers have been good at giving you that next level, presenting you with that next challenge, and it makes an individual want to continue to, to get to that next level and get that next set of points and make that next challenge. Although it's probably a good idea not to be addicted to those, and so sometimes it's good to go play other games that are just as exciting. Hello, my name is McKay, and my question is, how do the combinations of ones and zeros in the binary system convert to tasks and information in computers? So that, the answer to that is actually pretty complicated, but um, what they've done is, when, when you have a one or a zero, you either have the absence or presence of electricity that corresponds to that bit 
worth of information. And so they've mapped that inside of the computer to operations of the computer. So, for example, if you have a line in the computer that if electricity is flowing down it, it's going to activate a pixel on the monitor, then as soon as you put electricity down that line, a pixel will be activated on the monitor and it'll show up and you can see it. Um, if you don't have electricity flowing down that line, then it won't. And so you'll have instructions on the computer that correspond to either activating this pixel or that pixel or this operation or that operation of the computer. And they've just mapped all of those ones and zeros to those kinds of operations. Hi, my name is Elijah and I am in Mrs. Freeland's second grade class, Moscow, Idaho. And I would like to know, how do you prevent viruses from computer five? The best way to prevent viruses on your computer is to download an antivirus software. Those programs know how to go about looking for various viruses that could come and be installed on your computer. Hi, my name is Luke, and my question is, how do um, computer games know what to do when you get a question wrong? So that's uh, all the programming of the computer game. So the software engineers that design that game set up um, elements of the computer program that decide if you do this, something's going to happen, and if you do something else, a different thing will happen, and that's all predefined by the program that they wrote when they designed that computer game. Hi, my name is Sophia, and my question is, how, com how do computers know to change the color of the screen when you go to a different website? So the computer itself doesn't actually know. The website has the information around that color and so that information goes back after you find that website you go get it and it displays on your computer and the programmer that programmed that website tells your computer what color it should be. Hi my name is Claire why don't computers have hands? Um, some computers do have hands and we call those robots so there are robots out there that have hands that can pick stuff up and move it around um, but most computers don't because we don't need them to pick stuff up and Maybe it would kind of scare us if our computers had hands. Hi, my name is Annabella, and my question is, can a computer answer everything? No, they can't. We are going to continue to find questions that we want to answer and ask. And we have to tell the computer what that answer is. And so they will not always know the right answer. The computing power in today's cell phones is much higher than all the processing power of all the computers on the Apollo 11 lunar lander that put two men on the moon. And if there was a computer as powerful as the human brain, it would be able to do 38,000 trillion operations per second and hold more than 3,580 terabytes of memory. Hi, my name is Evan and my question is, how do computers program other electronic gadgets? So they don't really program, typically don't program other electronic gadgets, but they do control them. And the way they control them, it's similar to um, how a keyboard works where when you type on the keyboard, electrical signals are sent to the computer, but it's just going in the opposite direction. So the computer has a program that's running on it that sends signals to the electronic device that controls how it operates. Hi, my name is Ava, and my question is, is it an LED that makes the screen light up so you can actually see it? It depends. LEDs can be used to do that, but it depends on the type of monitor you have. Some monitors use other methods of displaying the pixels on your computer. Hi, my name is Dominic. How, my, my question is how many wires are in one whole computer? Oh my goodness. Billions of them. <laughs> so even a standard memory chip um, is going to have you know, eight gigabits worth of memory on it. And you're going to have several of those chips on a computer. So eight gigabits is going to be about eight billion uh, locations of memory. And each one of those locations will have at least a couple wires that represent that memory bit. Um, so you're talking billions and billions of little wires on a computer. Hi, my name is Zach. What, are, what is the most common computer? 
So the common computer architecture was invented by a guy named John von Neumann back in, I think, the 50s or 60s. And um, that computer architecture is used on almost every computer that we have nowadays. So if you have a desktop computer or a laptop computer, um, it's got a John von Neumann architecture to it. Hi, my name is Sawyer. And my question is, how did they come up with robots? Well, um, people have wanted to have something that does work for them for probably thousands of years. Um, so as soon as we were able to invent electrical motors and we had computers that could control those motors, um, everybody started to think of ways that we could take advantage of that to get work done. Hi, my name is Jake. My school is Lewis and Clark Elementary School in Pocatello, and my question is, are scientists making computers that actually think? So philosophers have thought about this question for uh, ever since computers were invented, and the answer to it is people don't know if they really think or not. It depends on what you define thinking to be. Um, if you think that multiplying two numbers together is thinking, then yes, computers think. But if you think that um, being conscious of your thoughts like we are uh, and, and knowing that you exist and feeling your internal self is part of thinking, then that's an open question. We don't know that any computer thinks in that way. Hi, my name is Oscar. How does the computer know which image to use? Um, that's done by the computer program that you're running. So if you're running a computer program, and it needs to display an image, the computer program is going to send that image to your video card and the video card will send that image to the monitor and the monitor displays that image to you. If someone is interested in a career in computer science, what should he or she study in school? Uh, well, you'll probably need to study a lot of math. It's, you know, programming is a lot of solving problems and, and algorithms, which is how to go about solving a problem. Well, there's a number of different subjects that I think are important for computer scientists to study or potential computer scientists to study. Uh, mathematics is certainly one of them. It's, it's used quite a bit in computer science and in programming. But I think there's also art, an artistic side to be a, being a computer programmer and a web developer. And so taking art classes and thinking about how you can display information and make it exciting is, is an important thing to study. Um, there's other classes. There's all kinds of industries nowadays that you can go into where computer science skills are valued. So you should study whatever you're interested in and try to find a job in that particular industry that involves computer science. I'm sorry we've run out of time. My thanks to Tim Anderson and Flossie Urban for answering students' questions. Thank you, it was great. Thank you for having us. My thanks also to the folks here at HP for hosting us. You can learn more about computers and lots of other science topics on the Science Trek website. We'll answer more questions about computers on Science Trek, the web show. If you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy. You can send it as an email or as a video question, record it on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll lend you a camera. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find it all and all the details at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.